Hello, today is January 25th, 2022. It's a Wednesday and it's about, it's two o'clock right now. Actually, it's like 2.02. And today I'm just going to read Titus. And thank you, Lord, for being here. I pray that you use my words. Use me, Lord, to speak what you want spoken. And we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth because your word is truth. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So Titus chapter one, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ for the faith of those chosen of God and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness in the hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie promised long ages ago, but at the proper time manifested even his word. Mm. And the proclamation with which I was entrusted according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, my true child, in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. For this reason I left you in Crete, that you would set in order what remains and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. Namely, if any man is above reproach, the husband of one wife, having children who believe, not accursed, not accused of dissipation or rebellion. For the overseer must be above reproach as God's steward, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine, not pugnacious, and not fond of sordid gain, but hospitable, loving what is good, sensible, just, devout, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word which is in accordance with the teaching, so that he will be able both to exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict. For there are many rebellious men, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, who must be silenced because they are upsetting whole families, teaching things they should not teach for the sake of sordid gain. One of themselves, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. For this reason, reprove them severely so that they may be sound in the faith, not paying attention to Jewish myths and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but their deeds, they deny him, but by, their but by their deeds, they deny him. Being, detest being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. Chapter 2 of Titus. But as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. Older men are to be temperate. Dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, in perseverance. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, subject, being subject to their own husbands so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Hallelujah. They're right there. Lord, thank you for sending our husbands to us so, so the word of God will not be dishonored. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my husband. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Likewise, 
Urge the young men to be sensible. In all things, show yourself to be an example of good deeds with purity in doctrine, dignified, sound in speech, which is beyond reproach, so that the opponent will be put to shame, having nothing bad to say about us. Urge bond slaves to be subject to their own masters in everything, to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith so that they will adorn the doctrine of our God, our Savior, in every respect. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people of his own possession, zealous for good deeds. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed, to malign no one, to be peace peaceable, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. For we also were once foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved, to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out upon us richly through Christ Jesus, our Savior, hallelujah, so that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life, hallelujah. This is a trustworthy statement. And concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God will be careful to engage in good deeds. These things are good and profitable for men, but avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and strife and disputes about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Reject a factious man after a first and second warning, knowing that such a man is perverted and is sinning, being self-condemned. When I send Artemis and Tychicus to you, make every effort to come to me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. Diligently help Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their way so that nothing is lacking for them. Our people must also learn to engage in good deeds to meet pressing needs so that they will not be unfruitful. Mm, All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So <laughs> those of those of us, this is one thing that I've noticed is when you are new to the faith, there are, it reminds me of, um, the parable of the seed, which I'm going to go to that. Um, that reminds me of like, um, you will come encounter with those who say you have to like follow the law, all 613 um, commandments of the law and Paul says, you know, don't don't argue about that um, or genealogies. Like there are some camps 
who say that they're Christians, but they think that one race is better than the other. But it, you know, we're all children of God. We might have more melanin and less melanin than somebody else. And that happens in the same family. That happens with siblings, you know? But don't talk about genealogies because oh, it's, I'm gonna use my, um, my iPad to look it up, but we are all, when we're born again, we are born of God's seed. Um, I love how Bob Jones says it. He's like God's sperm seed. Um, born again of God's seed. I'm just looking to see um, which, I thought it was in Peter. Um, born of God's seed. First or second Peter. Oh. Okay, it's first John 3, 9. Who, whosoever is born of God doesn't commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. I seriously thought it was in Peter, though. Maybe my friend, well, it's not maybe, my friend is right. I should write down uh, what I'm going to be speaking about. But anyways, we're, we're all children of God. We all are born, all born of God. We must be born again. Christ said that over and over. And we must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because otherwise, like when when you come to Christ, when Holy Spirit, he's wooing everybody, like come, come to Christ, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. And when we come to him, if we're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, we are left open to demonic attacks because we are washed pure. I, I would love like more revelation on on how we are in the spiritual realm. Because because this is how I, I see it in the spiritual realm. And this is just, you know, this is just me. Don't, I would say, pray about it. Um, I see it as because we are washed clean in the spiritual realm. Uh, and I don't want to sound new age, but like God's light is like just shining and exuding through us, right? And in the world, the world is dark. And those who are living in the world, the light's not shining in them. So like demonic spirits, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle, it's, it's against demonic spirits and principalities and rulers of darkness and rulers of wickedness in heavenly places. We are, like, when we come to Christ, we are lights that shine, you know? And we are washed pure, and we're made pure by Christ's blood. And the demonic attacks start happening pretty much right away. Because, hey, there's a clean house, you know? And so, uh, the, the, the attacks the false doctrine, the false prophets, the false teachers, you know, the wolves in sheep's clothing, they'll all come at you. And I'm not one who's for calling everybody a false prophet or everybody a false teacher. There, there needs to be some grace. And those who are told by God, and I've said this before, those who are told by God, hey, you need go talk to this person because he will appoint a time. He will give the words to say and how to say it in love. And we have to make sure we don't add on to it or take away from it. You know, uh, we need to understand we have to heed to that. And if we don't, you know, we just repent and we say we're sorry, Lord, because he will get somebody else to go talk to the person. But when somebody is error, like they're in error in life, in their doctrine, in their private life, you know, he will send people, he will send messengers to go talk to them, to, to let them know, hey, don't get off the path, 
you know, because it's a straight and narrow path, you know? So, and that's why I just turned to Titus today and I was like, oh, you know what? This is so good because it tells us, you know, be a husband of one wife. That means don't, don't think about polygamy. <laughs> Can you imagine? Well, I know that there are TV shows on that have polygamy and it doesn't seem right. <laughs> like it seems like they have a lot of problems. But as females, because I've worked with females for all of my life, and the majority of my clients, like 99.9999% of my clients are female. And I don't want to say that we're jealous, but the men will be so happy, so happy if they will treat their women like like just with love, like they love them, you know, it's not hard. And the same with women, like they're like flowers, you know, women are like flowers. You treat them well, you speak to them, you water them, you love them and they will bloom. Their aroma will be nice and fragrant. Hopefully it's not going to be like, um, oh, what are those flowers called? Not begonias. Uh, I forget which flowers they are. But you want really sweet smelling flowers that are beautiful. And that's what happens when, what happens when somebody starts dating. Their women are looking good. They're getting everything done. Facials and lashes and getting their hair done and their nails done and their feet done. They're getting everything done because they want to look the best for this man who is like, he's wooing her. And that's exactly what Holy Spirit does. Like he wounds us back to Christ and Christ, he's, his, his aroma, it's the uh, sweet smelling, fragrant aroma. Oh man, Christ is the best. And I love it because if marriages were intended to be polygamous, then I know it was like God didn't say anything against it, but he didn't make marriages like that. Like he didn't make Eve and another woman for Adam. It was just Eve for Adam, who was his helpmate. She was his rib, you know, she was taken out of him. And I really do believe that is how women are like be be patient and be prayerful because women we're we're somebody's rib i know i've told somebody um that man every time that i'm i was around him you feel like home it was just so comfortable man and we fought and we could we could we still fight we could still fight but man when we both let down our pride and just just be able to love each other, then it's wonderful. And he does. He feels like home and it's beautiful. And um, that I truly believe that's how it's supposed to be. And I, I really do think the new thing that is coming that God's doing is one, he's bringing like husbands and wives together who are supposed to be together. And two, what's coming out of that, not only like the children, but naturally there's going to be spiritual children as well. And what he has for these godly couples, oh my gosh, the, the world, it's, it's going to be such a much better place. So if you feel like you're stuck, like you know God has called you to do things and you keep trying to do this. I'm preaching to myself. You keep trying to do things because you feel like, all right, the Lord is leading me to this and it just doesn't happen. Just know that you're, you're stepping out in faith and you're being obedient. And if it's not happening, it's just to see if you're obedient 
or not. If you're going to be able to step out in faith and trust God. And I, I really do believe that's happening for both men and women. To see, to see uh, if they will trust him. And we trust him. We trust you, Lord. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day. God bless you. And I pray if you're single, Lord, thank you for bringing their godly spouse to them. The one that you choose, you will for them to be done. Because I know... I know that I know that I know out of all, all these couples of faith that they know, the husbands and wives know before they're married that their spouse is chosen by you, like Smith Wigglesworth, Lester Summerall, Derek Prince and his two wives that he had, not at the same time. Um, Oral Roberts, uh, so, there's so many more. And once you start, when we read about these people of faith, Lord, we see and we trust you that you will bring people together in your time. And I pray that we are just obedient and patient. Patient patient patience and thank you lord for your patience <laughs> and for your grace lord because i know a lot of us patience is isn't fun so thank you for your grace that you give because your grace abounds even more hallelujah in the mighty name of jesus amen